Hello everybody, I'm a rainbow. And before we get started, this is not a yeeps video. If you came here to get some yeeps action, this is not it. This video is about making thumbnails with a program called GIMP. I've had a lot of requests from people asking me how to make I make my thumbnails. This is how I do it. So I am going to walk through that process. This is not a short video. I do a lot of talking. You're probably going to be bored to death unless you really, really want to know how I make a thumbnail with GIMP. So if you've already stopped watching, that's fine. I am not going to be offended. All right, we're going to jump in and get started now. Normally, I start with the video, and somewhere in that video, there is a thumbnail waiting for me to find it. And in this case, I'm close to where I want here. I want something where I've got a very clean, uh, definitive looking image. This is about zip lines in Yeeps right there, which is the, that program. And that's a very, it's a striking picture. I like it. It's got plenty of zip lines behind it. It also has some open space where I can put my captions and work with that. So I'm going to go with this now and I just export this, whether whatever program you're using, most have the capability to export a frame. And that's what I'm going to do. Export it to there. All right. So I don't need shortcut anymore. Won't be dealing with it. You, you won't need your video editor at this point. And now I'm just going to open this up. And GIMP is my program, so it opens right up in GIMP. If you had to go and open it, you would go to File, and you could go to Open, run down to the directory, and find the picture. All right. And take a look at your picture before you start. Make sure it, the details are look good, the things that you want to highlight are on there, and then you're going to go for that. Now, the first thing I need for this is a caption. And um, the way GIMP works, I am going to layer in each layer of that, which means they sit on top of each other. Um, it's better than just embedding them straight together. So, and so right here, I'm going to click on this A, which is the text tool. And I'm going to select a font. And my font of choice is called Luckiest Guy. And it's there's all kinds of fonts available and I'm just going to grab that. I'm not going to worry about the color right now. And I need to know what I'm going to put down for a caption. In this case, it's about zip lines and I decided on zip line tips. And I already know that's going to be kind of small. So I'm going to jump all the way up to 300, 300 pixels to start with. And it'll probably get bigger from there, but there's the first one. And you can stack these, but I like to do them separately because then I can work with each one. And then we're going to do line. Same thing. Go back. You can just select it and change the font size. We're going to go with 300 on that one as well. Size that up one more time and tips. Gonna have to go ahead with 300 that as well, and since they have the same number of letter letters, this is your move tool right here, the little cross, and I'm just gonna grab that and look. So those are roughly the, the same width, and I I I this is just something that I do is try to keep all the text roughly blocked out, not always, but as a general rule. And this is not something you have to do. There are no rules for thumbnails. Just keep that in mind. You can do them any way you want. And I'm gonna go 400 with this one. And the zip is, it's about the same size. So we'll call that good for now. All right, so now I have zip line tips on there, which is what I'm looking for. And I want everybody, when they see it, to immediately know, most people of the familiar, you'll know this is, this is a Yeeps for hide and seek, but it's always good to put a logo on your thumbnail if one exists, because those are instantly recognizable by, by people that see them. And I just happen to have one that I got from the Yeeps Figma. 
and it'll open up by itself and it's quite large and I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to copy this then I'm going to go back to the image I just click on it and you see over here each thing I did has layered on top of this image it looks like one but I'm going to select the main image because I'm going to edit now and paste as a new layer and you see how big that is and since this is a layer we're just going to go to layer we're going to scale it scale layer and just from experience i'm going to call that 500 i've done this a number of times with this logo so get it where i want it all right so there's the yeeps logo and you can stick it wherever you want but i've got some space here which i think it will look just fine right there and i've still got my main image which people will see and then my text which jumps right out at you all right you want a clear image that people can recognize and read quickly uh, you don't want too much text you don't want uh, you know there are like i said there are no rules so anything goes but you want to catch, try to catch people's eye all right now i'm going to get the text tool and i like to make each line of my text a different color i do this because it catches the eye the different colors provided they go together they catch the eye and i'm gonna go with that one and when you select the tool you can just hit the little color let me walk through this again i've done a little fast select that you can actually select the color here um change and then i'm going to go with the blue which is down here because i've used it before and that'll just highlight so i'm going to go with zip line tips just like that now i want the text to kind of jump out off the page for me a little bit and this is where some filters will come in and we'll go ahead and grab that and then we go up to filters and GIMP has a bunch of them and the one I use a lot is drop shadow or long shadow and I'm going to do long shadow and you see how it put this yellow here and I don't want it yellow I'm just going to go with a black so you select the color and then you can go and find a black over here I normally just grab the little eyedropper grab the black right there and say good now you can change the length of this it defaults to 100 and the angle i'm not messing with that but you can make it really long which is kind of strange looking but normally i set this at about 20 or 30 and it's easy enough just to delete that and type it in and then you notice it kind of gets it gives it a little bit of a 3d effect it pops off the page and that and i like that most all of my captions are done that way so same thing filters light and shadow long shadow select color dropper grab the black you can use any color i'm just partial to doing it this way and the last one all right so there we go and I I like that right there. If you look at it, it jumps right at you. Zip line tips. And you jump right here. You see the yeeps right there. I don't see that I need to put anything else on this picture. So now we can go ahead and GIMP saves it in its default format. So I'm going to go ahead and save this in case I want to go back to it. We're going to save it. And you see it has this XCF format. That's what it saves it on as a native format I'm gonna give it a name I'm just gonna call it zipline tips so that way I'll know what it is all the time and now that is not a format that works for our thing so we've got to export it so for something if we're going to use it on YouTube we're going to export as and it needs to be a JPEG it defaults to PNG and I'm just going to down here at the bottom where it says fly, you just scroll through it, select it, export. It'll give you some options. You can just export again. And now that will have saved it. All right. Right there as a JPEG file. You see, if I hover over it, you can see it says JPEG. So that one's ready. 
to upload to YouTube just the way that is. Now, the other thing that I do with my thumbnails, and this is great for this, is I almost always use what I use for my thumbnail as the intro on my video. And I will show you what we do here is we select that layer and make it disappear. And then now we're going to export this as a PNG. All right. And I always call them title layer, but you can do anything you want. And the extension is going to be a PNG. You see it's from JPEG because that was the last one I saved. Let's call it a PNG file. You just go down to here, export. Same thing. There's some, you don't have to mess with any of that. Just export it and you should be good. And now if we go and look at it, you'll see it looks white, but this is actually transparent. So it's the PNG file. And I'm going to jump back over to Shotcut real quick. And we're going to take a look at the intro there for this one. And you can see I didn't use the background, but I used the same thing here. Zipline tips, yeeps. I colored that one yellow. I had this little uh, extra graphic that I stuck on there. But it's the same format. And you can just put it on your video if you want to use it. That's completely up to you. But that's how I make, I tie them together. So my thumbnail actually ties back to the video and people don't feel like I've bait and switched them when they see one thing or the other. That's how I make a thumbnail, how I do it in GIMP. If you have questions and you need some help with that, if you're going to try it yourself, please hit me up in the comments. I'm always ready to answer some questions. Now, I'm going to open up some other files and we will look at those. Uh, they're bad examples of thumbnails and we'll discuss why they're bad. And right here, so let's get this one. Matter of fact, let me just click on all of them. This will all open up in GIMP so we can see them. And bear in mind, I made all of these, so I'm not uh, getting harsh with anybody else except me. All right, here's a thumbnail. These are all based on examples, though, of things I've seen. Now, this one right here has big text. It's a little thin for me, but it's big. It's easy to see. Zipline tips tells you that immediately. And why are there brushes on here? There's some zip lines on the background, but you can't really know what those are. And there's brushes there. That is a bad thumbnail because it they're not tied together. There's nothing tying this to an actual zip line. And people are going to wonder, hmm, they don't see any reason to click on it. Now, this one doesn't have... It's got zipline tips on it. Those, these could be a little bit better, but it's not too bad. And it's got a very cool looking picture. The problem is for a thumbnail, when this is shrunk down, and let me show you here. Let's go, oops, view, zoom. I'm going to zoom it down to 25%. When you zoom it down and it gets shown on a home page, nobody can see it. They don't really know what it is. All right. They might recognize the Yeeps logo, which would be good, and see zipline tips, but they can't see what this picture is. It does not draw them in. So there's no reason for them to click on it. Let's look at the other one. All right. Here's kind of the same one before. Um, it's got zip lines. You can see it. That's good. It says Yeeps on it. That's good. Um, and it says how to use zip lines. And this has the same problem as the one I showed you before. When you go and we look at it at 25%, boy, that is that starts getting hard to read it, as the text is smaller. You have all this space, make it bigger. Use some bold text. Get up there so anybody can see it. All right. You want, want it to catch their eye and want them to jump in. All right, here's one that's not too bad. It They used a big a big text font. It's very bold. It says Yeeps on it. It's got a reasonable picture on there. No zip line, but okay. Um, good looking Yeep. But the problem is you can't read 
the font that they used up in here. This is some font that uh, it's, you know, it's very um, customized, so it makes it hard to le read. You don't see zip, zip line immediately. The eye is kind of buried in there, so it makes it hard to read. Once again, keep in mind, everything I've told you are guidelines. You can go out and get a video where it just completely has a terrible thumbnail and get a lot of views, but I wouldn't bet on that. Something has to draw the viewer in to go, hey, I want to click on this and actually get started on the video. So you want to catch their attention. Whatever you're doing, catch their attention, make it easy for them to see it, you know, and draw them into your video. All right, everybody, that's how I do it. Making my thumbnails, some of the philosophy behind my thumbnails. I hope this is helpful. And like I said, if you have questions, please hit me up via Discord. You can hit me up in the comments. I will do my best to answer and help you out. All right, y'all be good. Take care now. Bye-bye.